Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church on this Sunday, December 20th, 2020. I'm your lay reader, Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found at the link below this video on Facebook and on YouTube, or you can head to our website, www.centralpresspb.com, click on the publications link on the top of the webpage, scroll down until you see today's date, and go ahead and click, uh, click on the date, and you will be able to download and print out the bulletin uh, for this worship service. <clears throat> uh, now that you have the bulletin, I invite you to, to uh, look at the announcements on the back of the bulletin. The session has decided to stick with virtual services for the foreseeable future. Keep in contact with us via social media. Username Central Press PB or on our website for announcements about any special services or, and when we plan to resume in-person worship. Uh, not listed on the announcements, but uh, I will let you know that the PCUSA has uh, published a uh, Christmas worship uh, service. Uh, I will be publishing that on uh, Christmas Eve evening about five o'clock. So if you're interested in a Christmas Eve service, uh, that service will be uh, provided for you. Uh, archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Links to each are on our website, centralprespb.com. Uh, now that we've caught up with the announcements, uh, let, uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Walking towards Bethlehem, listening every step of the way, for the sound of our name, for the announcement that we have found favor with God. Walking towards Bethlehem, watching every step of the way, for a new star in the sky, for guidance in our daily lives. Walking towards Bethlehem, sensing we are not alone. Angels are all around us. The prayers of saints surround us. Walking towards Bethlehem, hoping we shall find a baby in a manger. A simple sign that God loves us still. And reason enough to sing God's praise. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Please join me in the prayer of confession that, uh, in unison that can be found in your bulletin and then silently. Holy and awesome God, your love is wider than our sight. Your grace is more wonderful than we can sing. Yet you choose to visit us as a child in a manger. Love us as a friend and save us as a redeemer. We admit that there is much in us that is not ready to receive you. Our world is torn by horrors in distant countries and tensions on our streets. Our communities have children hungry in school and youth hungry for work. Our lives are busy to the point of exhaustion, and we carry so much worry that turns prayer dry and flattens our joy. Holy and awesome God. Stop us long enough that we might hear a song in the darkest night, might feel your presence in the midst of common tasks, and sense joy and hope that flows from the strength of your care. Come, give us a heart of praise and a song of gladness. In Jesus we pray, and now silently. Amen. The good news of Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let's go ahead and turn it over to Rose Von Tungwin for this week's children's sermon. Good morning, everyone. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Listen to the word of God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. <clears throat> this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. We want everything to look nice, the decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons, we want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. 
we decorate because it's tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and joy. Today we light these candles as a sign of our joy and the beautiful things of this season. Not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light these candles because company is coming. Thanks, Rose, for that great children's sermon. Now we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Reverend Tim Reeves with this week's sermon, Have I Got Good News for You? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from the second book of Samuel, beginning with the first verse of chapter 7 and proceeding through verse 11, and then picking up at verse 16. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. We turn to our second reading, which comes from the 26th, or, or the first chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, beginning with verse 26 and proceeding through verse 38. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, 
And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear. That hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. Sarah was ecstatic when she learned that she would finally have a speaking role in her church's annual Christ Christmas pageant. For as long as she could remember, she had always played the part of a sheep. And while it was fun to mill around the sanctuary on her hands and knees and to get into a little bit of mischief when the shepherd's backs were turned, as sheep are prone to do, Sarah wondered if she would ever be given the chance to play a more important role. She thought she had overheard one of the mothers say, Sarah is getting a little old to play a sheep, don't you think? But she dared not get her hopes up because, quite frankly, she had thought the same thing the past two years, only to be assigned yet again the role of the first shepherd's number one sheep. Oh yes, the mothers in charge had producing the Christmas pageant down to an exact science. So not only were there all the people one would expect to find in a Christmas pageant, but also such roles as the first shepherd's number one sheep and even the third wise man's camel steward who took care of his master's animal whenever they stopped for the night and would who and who would keep repeating the same line for most of the pageant are we there yet then came that moment of moments when the mother separated the younger children from the older ones and Sarah was asked to go with the older group, the group, the holy grail of the Christmas pageant, those who would be assigned speaking roles. Of course, she dared not dream that she would be given such a plum role as Mary on her first time out, but that did not really matter to her. She had arrived. She was a big girl now. No more of her dad's white tube socks on her hands and feet. No more fluffy cotton balls all over her back to represent sheep's wool. Now she would have a real costume. There was no doubt about it as far as Sarah was concerned. This was it. There was no holding her back now. But 
as she stood there and watched as child after child was picked before her and assigned those particular roles, she couldn't help but wonder if there hadn't been a terrible mistake. Was it all too good to be true? Had she been placed in the wrong group after all? Was she destined to be a sheep forever? She tried not to think about it because it made her want to cry, but at long last, her name was called. Sarah, the mothers said, we would like you to be the angel who announced the birth of Jesus to the shepherds. She rushed forward, her heart beating a mile a minute, and eagerly agreed. You realize, of course, one of the mothers said that this is a big responsibility. There are a few lines that you will have to memorize, after all. I already know them, Sarah said excitedly. All those years as a sheep have prepared me for this. And she began to quote the words from the King James Version of Scripture because, as I said, producing this pageant was down to an exact science. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this be, shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The mothers smiled their approval and congratulated themselves on making yet another perfect choice. And over the next several weeks, everything went perfectly during their rehearsals until what began as a muted whisper near the coffee pot soon became the talk of the entire congregation. This year's pageant may be the best one we have ever had. Just wait until you hear how beautifully Sarah announces the good tidings of great joy. Finally, the evening of the pageant arrived and all the preparations and rehearsals were about to pay off. Anticipation was at an all-time high. The costumes had never looked prettier. Even the rowdy boys who always seemed to be in trouble for something were on their very best behavior. And suddenly the spotlight shone on Sarah as she was lowered by pulleys to a spot just above where the shepherds were keeping watch over their flocks by night, and a hush fell over the congregation. But Sarah said nothing. In all of the excitement, her mind had gone completely blank. She could not remember her lines, and panic began to set in as she feared that she would be demoted next year. Say something, anything, a voice in the back of her brain shouted at her. Then she managed to open her mouth and blurt out the words, Have I got good news for you? Afterwards, it was unanimously agreed that this had indeed been the best Christmas pageant the church had ever had. Have I got good news for you? I think that sums up not only the celebration of the birth of our Savior, which we will mark in just a few short days, but the message of our scripture readings on this fourth Sunday of Advent as well. Today, we are invited to pause and reflect on one very simple yet profound truth. The ultimate joy of this season is not in the gifts we give, but in the gift we receive. Another Presbyterian minister once pointed 
or put it this way, we think a great deal these days about offering ourselves up to God. Over and over again, we commit our lives, everything we are and everything we have to God for God to use as God will. As Christmas draws near, we ponder in our hearts the questions of how we too can let Christ be born in us and Christ's light shine through us. We respond to the countless appeals by giving generously. We run all over town, or at least all over the internet, striving to find the perfect gift for someone we love. Knowing we have been blessed, we think of how we can bless others, and we treat the, these last moments before Christmas as if they were about giving as opposed to receiving, as if Christmas is being indebted or generous instead of being graced. I especially like those last two words, being graced because they emphasize God's role as the giver and our role as recipients. And being graced is the good news that God had for David and for Mary and for all of creation. For David, this good news comes in the context of resolving to build a house for God. David has consolidated his power and resides in a palace and begins to think to himself that he needs to build an equally resplendent dwelling for God. Now, scholars debate why David felt the need to do so, and without going into too much detail, the two main arguments are that either David was genuinely moved by gratitude, or David was being rather self-serving in that he was hoping up to shore up his power base even more by exhibiting to all the people he governed that God was on his side. But David's motivations are not the issue in this passage. Instead, the driving issue is that God had not only graced God's chosen people from the beginning, but also that God would continue to do so. And the same held true for David as well. God acted to bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. God chose to dwell among the people in a tabernacle, and it was God who took David from shepherding the flocks to be a shepherd over God's chosen people. It was God who had defeated all of David's enemies, and it will be God who makes David's name great and David's dynasty an everlasting one. So in essence, Nathan is instructed to inform David, have I got good news for you? Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. How hollow and cruel those words must have sounded later on when the people of Israel would be carried off to exile in Babylon and the monarchy was destroyed. How hollow and cruel those words must have sounded even later when Israel was little more than an obscure province in the vast Roman Empire. There was no descendant of David on the throne. And then when it looked as if things could not get any worse and when the darkness could not get any darker, Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Or to paraphrase, have I got good news for you? Greetings, favored one, he begins. On the surface, we may think that favored is an adjective, but in the Greek version of this passage, it's a passive verb. As such, it is better translated as you who have received grace. One commentator notes Gabriel's greeting could be paraphrased, you have been loved for a very long time. 
Then Gabriel continues, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. God's promise to David was about to be fulfilled in ways that only God could have imagined. The God who dwelt so intimately with the people of Israel in the tabernacle was about to be even more intimately linked with God's people as God would become flesh and live among us. Have I got good news for you? We are still being graced by that God. And that is the message for this sinful and broken world on this fourth Sunday of Advent. It's tempting to imagine that the human predicament, whether we define that as the state of our warring world or the state of our broken lives, can never be healed or overturned. But Luke tells us that not only is redemption possible, it has already happened. Because of the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the holy continues to break into our lives and to bring us closer to the completion of creation and the fulfillment of the reign of God. Have I got good news for you? We are invited to pause and reflect on that very simple but profound truth. There is a gift that God cannot wait for us to receive, a gift God was literally dying to give, a gift in which all the soul's deepest longings are wrapped, and this gift is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior freely given to us all, because God has loved us all for a very long time. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings, which will be taken electronically this week. Please head to our website, www.centralprespb.com. Click on the Donate Now link and make your tithe electronically. If you prefer, you can mail checks to our uh, physical address, 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At, us, at this time, let us share our joys and concerns, uh, which there are several. 
let me grab my list. Um, we were asked to uh, keep the um, family of a couple of people we mentioned last week, um, the family of Diana Coates, who is the cousin of George Mosley, and the family of Ian Parker. Uh, Mr. Parker was the uh, friend of um, Dr. Carlos Arango, uh, who is a friend of the Vic family. Um, Mr. Parker passed away this week due to complications from COVID-19. Um, Diana Coates, who is the cousin of George Mosley, uh, passed uh, shortly after uh, last Sunday's worship service. Um, so we, we ask that you keep those families uh, in your thoughts and prayers this week. Another uh, um, thing we need to keep in mind of is Haley Chandler, uh, the daughter of Amanda and Michael Chandler, uh, who uh, previously attended our church and we remain close with to this day. Um, Haley got a, di a cancer diagnosis this week. Um, they are working with the uh, doctors and nurses at, uh, at Children's Hospital in Little Rock. Uh, to decide what uh, course of action they're going to take. Uh, last I heard, I believe that she's going to start her chemo treatment shortly after Christmas. Uh, so we need to keep the Chandler family in our prayers in the coming weeks and days. Um, we also ask that you keep the family of Bobby Lawson in your prayers. Um, Bobby Lawson is uh, Jessica Munn's grandfather-in-law and Silas Scarlett and Dominic's uh, great-grandfather who passed away this week. Um, we also ask that uh, you keep uh, Jimmy Mosley, Carol Brown, and uh, Brad Von Tuggle in your prayers, all who are uh, dealing with uh, various uh, issues. Um, also, we ask that you keep the families and the EMT uh, of the EMTs who were shot um, uh, this week here in Pine Bluff in your prayers as well. Um, let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Uh, please keep the families of Bobby Lawson, Ian Parker, and Diana Coates in your care. Uh, please know, let them know that uh, you are with them and that you understand the, the, the uh, definition of loss and that you understand what they are going through. Uh, we ask that you care for uh, Carol Brown, Brad Von Tunglin, Jimmy Mosley, Dominic Munn, and Haley Chandler. Uh, Dominic, uh, they, they all are needing of medical um, uh, healing. Uh, Dominic, went, who went through his surgery successfully this week, had some small complications. We ask that you heal him as, as quickly as possible and you grant the doctors and nurses of these, of these individuals the wisdom and the knowledge and the uh, and to follow your will and to heal these individuals as quickly as possible. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples in Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and presence of God's Holy Spirit. Taking today's message with you and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.